All right. On this True Law Stories, we're going to talk about death and taxes and losing your money and the wealth destruction of long-term care, the truth about estate planning, crazy trust names that Melissa comes up with. No, I'm just kidding. Melissa, say hi. Hi. <laughs> Melissa is an estate planning care, uh, guardianship and elder law attorney in St. Petersburg. We're going to talk about a, also a crazy story about an unlicensed caregiver who filed divorce for a man while his spouse was on vacation, how she protected her grandparents, and who needs to do long-term care planning and why you need it to protect your children. All this on true law stories, but of course, one of the best ways to improve any business and is through your customer and client stories. And if you want to learn how to do that, how to improve sales, marketing, and operations, you can get the book at Video Testimonials that Land the Big Fish by going to testimonialbook.com. All right, let's get started. We'll talk a little bit about your story, about your grandparents, about some of the crazy names that you've done and crazy things. But how did you get into the area of guardianship and estate planning and, and elder law? So when I was in law school, I knew that I really liked estate planning and an awesome estate planning professor. And I just knew that was the place for me. I happened to get a job right after I had passed the bar with an attorney that did estate planning. And she also did elder law. So I fell into that. I didn't even realize it was a practice area when I was in law school and within elder law, started doing some guardianship cases with that law firm as well, and just loved the practice area and being able to give back. And if someone hasn't listened to this before, estate planning, I think most people would know what it is, but can we explain what elder law and guardianships are? Absolutely. So elder law, um, as I said, I didn't even know it was a practice area when I was in law school. I had no idea what that encompassed. Um, and in Florida, elder law is Medicaid planning, um, special needs planning as well. And it does encompass guardianship as well, um, veterans benefits, uh, and really anything that we can look at to make sure that long-term care planning is in place for someone who's aging. And, and it's so important. It's so important. I've, I know so many people, it's one of those things that no one talks about, but it literally affects everyone, doesn't it, these days? Absolutely. And I feel like you're never too young to plan for long-term care. If you don't plan, then obviously the worst is going to happen. The best that can happen is you have a plan in place way too early and you can sit back and relax. Yeah, it's, I've seen so many people's wealth just destroyed by long-term care and it, no one thinks it's going to happen to them do they no and you know what's interesting we see a lot of our clients come to us when they say oh, i needed to get my estate plan in order or i knew that i needed to make sure i had a power of attorney so i avoided guardianship but the real catalyst for me coming to your office is that someone in my family or a close friend of mine they had to go through probate or had to go through a guardianship. And that's the catalyst to get them in front of us to realize that, yes, it really is something I need to get done. Yeah, it's, I've de dealt with it. my parents, my in-laws. It's, and it, it's one of those things that it's interesting too, because it happens to people and then they call and, or they talk to me and they're like secretive about it. And they're like, and no one wants to admit to it, do they? That they've made a mistake. They don't. Yeah, that they made a mistake or they thought that it was simple that you just told somebody that, hey, I want you to be my guardian of my minor children. It's not that simple. And we try to break down those barriers. We try to make it super simple and easy. And by the end of it, our clients are like, you know what? That wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. I feel so much better that I've gotten it done. And now everything's in place. That's great. It's a good feeling, I'm sure. And it's nice to see when it, because it, it, it inevitably it's going to kick in, isn't it? It's not one of these, if I die. And, and that's one of the funny things that I always say, and, and maybe I'm the only one that finds it funny, but when we do our living wills for our, our uh, clients, that's the document where they can say whether they want to be taken off of life support in certain circumstances. They always get tripped up by like, if I have a terminal condition, it's, it's one of the options. And they're like, what if I have cancer? And I always say, we're all terminal, yeah. unless you know something I don't. <laughs> I'm terminal right now. And so are you. We might not both be ill, but we're all going somewhere one day. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's, it is funny because I've heard people say it's if I die, I'm like, 
<laughs> it's, it's What's the other option? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, so I, I'm glad we can laugh about it. And speaking of like li living wills and trusts, I didn't realize like you get to name them. <laughs> yeah, we mo have most of our clients who just want a simple trust with the name, their first name, last name, and then trust agreement. Um, but some of them will actually let us get a little creative with them. And I've had clients who have decided they wanted like the husband's name and the wife's name smashed together. So it's like the Brangelina Trust, which was fun. And then we had one that decided that they wanted to name their trust after their dogs. So we did the dog's initials as the trust. So it's fun to see what people come up with. I try to challenge people to be creative because have a little bit of fun with it while you can, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Why be boring? It's not like anyone's going to be judging you when it comes right. into play. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and elder law is an interesting thing too, because you see a lot of people taking advantage of other people. And you've had a few of those situations, haven't you? We have, yeah. We practice guardianship as well. So we do see some exploitation cases that come in where either it's a family member or it's a friend that has put themselves in a place where they are financially taking from someone who doesn't have the right memory anymore, doesn't really understand what's going on and is freely giving away money that they probably shouldn't be giving away. We had a really interesting case recently where a wife had hired a caregiver for her husband who had become disabled. And she, the wife, went on vacation only to find out when she got back from vacation that the caregiver had taken her husband to an attorney and had named herself as his power of attorney and had also filed a divorce on behalf of the husband from his wife. So that was just absolutely oh insane. Exploitation at his finest. She, the caregiver was being paid tons more money than the amount of care she was providing. He was paying for meals and buying her all types of lavish gifts because he didn't know. He was in, incapacitated and wasn't able to make those decisions. But that ability to make the decisions hadn't been legally taken away yet by the court. This all happened and then spurred a guardianship after that. Well, tell me a little bit about, I mean, because you just said in two minutes what seems like a massive amount of drama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me about when you first got this case and, and what you saw. So initially we got the call and we heard about the scenario I outlined where the wife found out the caregiver had removed him from the assisted living facility where he was living. And she had taken him to an attorney who did a new power of attorney document, removing the wife as his power of attorney and naming the caregiver as his power of attorney. And then later found out that as power of attorney, the caregiver had filed for divorce on behalf of this gentleman so that she essentially was severing that relationship with him and his wife. And so that was our initial call. And so that was a lot of drama in an initial consultation. Yeah. We knew that it was an emergency case, obviously. So we stepped in, we were able to file an emergency petition and get it in front of one of the uh, magistrates within a couple days and get an uh, emergency guardian appointed. Guys, step in, make sure that there wasn't any further exploitation that was able to happen. Um, and then eventually we were able to get um, another family member appointed to act as guardian and make decisions, both financial decisions and medical decisions for the gentleman, because um, he was not able to make those decisions himself. Did he remain divorced? Did they get remarried? That is uh, right now still pending. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's like the first time I've ever heard of a forced divorce. Yeah, uh, interesting. Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> and how, how do we prevent stuff like this from happening? So the best way to prevent things like that from happening in the first place is to have a power of attorney in place, um, which unfortunately in that event, yes, they did have a power of attorney in place. 
Um, but make sure you're screening those caregivers. Make sure that any caregivers that are coming into the home to care for your loved one um, actually are legitimate, They're working for a legitimate company, um, and they are licensed. We found out that this lady had not been licensed for, I believe, two years, even though she claimed she was. And she was working for her own company, which was not even an active company when we looked it up either. So she was just all kinds of not licensed, not working for a real company and clearly exploiting this man. You can do background checks on these people if you want to. There are personal investigators that'll look into people if you want to just get that criminal background and make sure that you're not bringing someone in help take care of your vulnerable family member who may potentially exploit them. Yeah, that's, yeah, it seems like pretty good due diligence. And that, yeah, and, and putting those power of attorney in place. And also, yeah, it's, it that's crazy stuff. And uh, you've dealt with this too with your own family, haven't you? We, we all eventually do, but you're in a unique position as an attorney to help your family with this. Yeah, I actually, my grandfather passed a couple of days before I took the Florida bar many moons ago, and I was very blessed to be able to help my grandmother with her estate planning after my grandfather had passed away and get a trust in place for her, as well as a power of attorney and a healthcare surrogate and a living will. She actually ended up getting dementia. And so we were very happy as a family that all of that was already in place many years before she got dementia so that there were clear roles. Everyone knew what they were supposed to be doing. And I was also able to advise the family on how to apply for Medicaid benefits so that she could get some benefits to help pay for her assisted living facility that she was in. And that's huge. It's huge because people don't understand how expensive assisted living is, do they? No, not at all. It, it is a lot of care and it is a lot of money to pay for that care every single month. Yeah. And with, when you're dealing with your family, that had to have been, was it a, was it an easy situation or was it, it did they just trust you to do it? <laughs> so it, it is interesting because I, they saw me as the niece, of course. Yeah. Um, and I think it's hard to get past seeing your family member when they're younger than you as a figure that actually knows what they're talking about. But it, it, there was a point where they were like, you know what, you actually know what you're doing. And I said, yeah, I've been doing this for over 10 years. I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> So they were all very grateful that I was able to provide that information. I did have to step away and say, look, I'm talking to you as the attorney, and I'm not talking to you as your niece or your daughter or the granddaughter. I'm advising you as the attorney in this situation. And I felt like that helped everyone realize that I was just doing this for the benefit of my grandmother and making sure that any decisions that we made were only in her interest. And I had no other interest interest in whether I benefited or my mother benefited or any of my aunts or uncle, whether they benefited from my advice. Yeah, that's great. And it's great that you, someone that you really trusted that they should trust. You seem trustworthy to me. <laughs> 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 and it, it's tough when a family member goes to people with dementia, quite often, I'm sure I, I've dealt with it. And it's really tough to see it, but then also to get anything done at that point, isn't it? It definitely is. And like I said, I've been practicing in this area for over 10 years and I have seen so much memory loss and dementia that I almost feel like I could get a medical degree in the thing because I have diagnosed it. Like I know that person has it before they realized it in some of my cases. And I do feel like I have the, the resources that I can give my clients, let them know different options that are out there, different Alzheimer's association where they can call a 24 seven line when they need information. I have more resources than just legal. So I'm happy to share that with my clients. That's great. And it's one of those things that everyone, what you're talking about today, everyone should be taken care of. So let's talk a little bit about who definitely needs this, who definitely needs to plan for this, and what's that process look like? So my suggestion is everyone plans for this. Like we discussed earlier, everyone is terminal, but everyone has the ability to plan for that 
event in their life, whether it's that you've passed or maybe you've come incapacitated while you're still alive. And so if, as soon as you can get that plan in place, it will give you that peace of mind knowing that there's a plan instead of leaving it up to chance and letting the court determine who's going to make decisions for you if you're incapacitated or who is going to distribute your assets once you've passed away. Another thing that I just was talking with some friends about is if you have minor children and you don't have any legal documents, you don't have a will, and you don't have a pre need designation of guardian for those minors, those minor children are going to go to the state and the state's going to figure out from there where they belong. So I know I don't want my kids going to a foster home waiting to figure out do you go to this grandma or go to that grandpa or that aunt or uncle. And so it's super important at every stage in life to have a will, minimum, power of attorney, healthcare surrogate. And then if you want to avoid probate, let's add a trust in there as well. Great. And those are amazing three documents. So if someone needs your help, tell us a little bit about what areas you serve and who you help. Absolutely. So I have my own law firm, Finley Williams Law Firm. Our main office is in downtown St. Petersburg. And then we have a satellite office in Lakewood Ranch. Our main practice areas are estate planning, which includes wills, trusts, powers of attorney, healthcare surrogates, and living wills, as well as we do probate. We do trust administrations for any trusts for people that have passed away, trying to give those assets out. We do Medicaid planning for individuals who need to go to nursing home or assisted living or need to have home care help. And we also do veterans benefits as well, both aid and attendance and veterans disability appeals. And we also do guardianship for anyone that might be incapacitated and not have a power of attorney or a healthcare surrogate as well as guardianships for individuals who are developmentally disabled or for minors who might have inherited over the asset limit. Great, great. And so we'll put a link to all that in the show notes and, and obviously a link to your website and a link. You're also pretty active on Facebook. We are, yes. All right, so we'll put a link to that as well. Melissa, thank you so much for being on True Law Stories. Thank you so much, I, and it's been a pleasure. And thank you all for taking the most of an eye in our journey that's been on garlic and true law stories.